Welcome to the B.F. Anderson Technical Report for February the 4th. Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors of all time, very wise man, recommend books about him such as The Buffett Way. He once said, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy only when others are fearful. There's a lot of wisdom in this. You have to just kind of think of it logically. When the masses and the a majority of the investors go in one direction, it's an auction market, so you have to realize that it can get a little bit overdone. Could be a temporary pause, could be a bear market. You just don't know. But I think you have to pay attention to sentiment, even though it is a secondary indicator. Still, if you see trouble in an environment like this, just be flexible. Let's get right into what's going on. NASDAQ, as you can see, continues to stay in a very nice uptrend. You can see it tested the 25-day, tested the 25-day, close to making a new high. It's just a perfect chart. It looks great. Bull market continues. Here we have the uh, weekly indicator, which is the 35-week moving average, continues to stay in a very nice uptrend. Now, you can see we're starting to see a little bit wider bars here, which means more volatility, and we'll get into the volatility index in a little bit. This is the net new highs, net high, excuse me, New York high low, which is measuring the number of new highs minus the number of new lows on the New York Stock Exchange. You can see we had the pullback, somewhat of a small correction, really no big deal. Uh, you can see that we got a contraction, contraction in the net new highs, and you can see that the 10-day moving average for the net new highs kind of still says, you know, things aren't perfect right now. New lows, however, no problem. So this really doesn't look like a massive sell-off of any kind. It just looks like to me we got a blip about one, two, three, four, five days ago. Did it have something to do with what's going on with these short sellers? Maybe. It, it, it did create an air of uncertainty. So we saw a spike in new lows, but it's quickly calmed down. Continue to watch, though. S&P 500 on a long-term basis looks perfect. Note that, again, we do have white space in here. Now, we're starting a new month. As you can see, we're starting February here, not making a new high. However, on the NASDAQ, we're close to making a new high. Here's your new month. So each bar represents a month. These are the moving averages. This is the 10 and 20. As long as we stay on a golden cross, we are in a bull market. China, on the other hand, did hit a new high. So we're starting to see in our in our numbers, in our work, we're starting to see more emphasis on uh, the international side of things. Here we have the aggression index on a daily basis, which is not the indicator, but I just like looking at it anyway. You can see here that what we're comparing technology to consumer staples continues to make new highs. Very powerful. Now, here's the actual indicator. This is the weekly read. This is the 40-week moving average. As long as the ratio stays above the 40-week moving average, you're in, a, you're in a buy signal as far as aggression goes. Now, these are the three economic indicators we keep an eye on. This is interest rates. You can see they kind of peaked up here, you know, about 1.2%, pulled back, back down to about 1%, now kind of climbing back up again a little bit. You know, it'd be interesting to see what happens with interest rates. It could be a big issue going forward. Now, the price of oil's again, starting to perk up a little bit. Again, that is a sign of economic activity. Here we have the financial stocks. You can see they pulled back along with interest rates, now starting to perk back up again. That's a good sign. We want interest rates to go up a little bit because we want the economy to kind of pick up steam. But at the same time, we don't want to see double-digit interest rates or rampant inflation, which may be coming. Here we have the S&P 500 on a daily basis. You can see we challenged that lower moving average held and then have rallied back above it. So we're in good shape there on a daily basis on the S&P. Now that's the 25 and 50 day moving average. Here we have the 200 day moving average. Only comment I would make here is a lot of white space between this moving average and the, uh, the price of the actual index. Again, back to fear and greed, uh, what Warren Buffett was talking about at the beginning slide. You know, be greedy up here and be fearful down here. So we're fearful, but the problem, again, that I have to emphasize on this particular indicator is it can stay this way for an extended period of time and the market continues to move higher. But at some point, 
Well, you'll see a little bit more about what I'm talking about here in the next couple of slides. All right, here's the volatility index. You can see here that it kind of popped up, you know, about the same time the new lows popped up. Uh, we popped up here. Now we pulled right back in uh, below 30. Good sign. Uh, you can see the rate of change here. I put the rate of change on the VIX, the volatility index. You can see volatility ever since March 23rd has been in a steady downtrend. That kind of goes hand in hand with a bull market. So basically things are quiet. Uh, however, did turn up, break above the line, but just stay flexible. That's the message. Now, I did want to point out a couple of uh, sectors of the economy. Here we're looking at the industrial sector. You can see here during this most recent cor uh, correction, there was quite a bit of damage done to this. This is the 10-day moving average. You've actually gotten a death cross here, broke down below the 50-day moving average. However, may have bottomed here and starting to stabilize, but that's really uh, kind of where most of the correction took place was industrials, as well as the metals, the metals and the mining stocks. You can see here, we broke below that 10-day moving average here, then we violated because we made a lower low uh, below this here, we violated, therefore, you know, we, we basically had a sell signal here, then broke the 50-day, but is starting to look like it's trying to stabilize. Here we have the transportation index. You're seeing the same picture here. You got the break, the violation, came down below the 50-day. Let's see if it consolidates on a death cross. Just not a good sign. Now, what I wanted to point out about fear and greed is this. You can use rate of change as kind of a way to measure this. In other words, what this is all about is, is that when the market moves up in, at a, in an extreme fashion, uh, it, it causes the masses or people that normally would not invest in the stock market to start coming in. So what happens is you get into a bull market, market forms a top on rate of change and then pulls back. So when you get these extreme greed type situations with the rate of change has gone up. So what's important here is that since 1980, we've only seen a move like this three times. Now, let me, let me clarify here a little bit. Since the low back on March 23rd, it's been 213 trading days since that time. So the question is, how many times in the past, since 1980, has the S&P climbed this much in this short amount of time, 213 days? Well, it did it once back here in 83, and it did it back here in 2010, and along here, we're at the same situation. This is not sustainable. The rate of change is going to have to come back down again. We're probably going to need to see this market consolidate these gains. It could take days. It could take months. might take years. But no bear market. We're not seeing the signs of a bear market. But we do see an overheated market that probably could use a little bit of uh, patience in here. Now, on the top five, we're looking at tapestry here. This is a retail uh, consumer discretionary, you know, mainly purses, things like coach. This is the old coach. You can see it also pulled back, however, held the 50 day and it's starting to break back out. Looks, looks okay. We did get somewhat of a volume signature today, though. 8 million shares, that's pretty good on a breakout. Looks good, actually. Uh, this is Grow Generation. This is a company in the marijuana business. More to do with the, uh, you know, basically, it, everybody that grows marijuana does it indoors. So they sell a lot of the equipment, the lights, the soil, the seeds, all that type of stuff. It's like a Home Depot for marijuana growers. And these would be like commercial marijuana growers and medical growers. But anyway, you can see here, it too pulled back like everything else. Pretty much held that 50-day, gave a new buy signal right in here because you can see here the volume did pick up above average. Now here's Novavax. This is a company, it's a biotech company involved in the vaccine. Major gap up on news recently and then consolidated for just a couple of days and then breaking out again. This one looks a little hot for me, but it is interesting to watch. You can see here an extended base and just like a rocket taking off. These can be dangerous situations, but they're worth watching. Here's Penn National Gaming, again, internet uh, gambling. Uh, continues to consolidate in here and broke out. Volume has been a little bit of anemic, not exactly what I'd be looking for, but I would continue to watch it. Here's Snap, which is, you know, social networking, basically broke out of a base. Volume has been reasonable. 
uh, looks okay, uh, I would keep an eye on it. So that's it. If you have any questions, please give me a call. Thank you very much.